Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day for Thursday, the 26th day of September, year of our Lord, 2024. Do pray this finds you well. Missed you last night. I was in Chicago at a Chicago White Sox game. Uh, enjoyable evening. Uh, and they didn't lose, uh, which would have been historic had they. I think they won again tonight. They, would have, they right now have... Uh, tied the all-time record for the most uh, games lost in a single season and if they lose one more and they're playing Detroit a couple more they have a few more games left in the season they're playing Detroit Detroit's pretty hot right now so uh, we'll see what happens um, and, and Detroit Detroit can make it into the playoffs so baseball it's crazy but uh, it's been a tough season for to, to watch White Sox baseball but uh, Beautiful ballpark, and it was a beautiful night, and uh, you, you couldn't beat the price of the tickets since they're not in the playoffs and everything. That uh, You just basically pay the city fees, and in you go, and it was uh, just an enjoyable evening. So anyway, a beautiful evening out there tonight. Hopefully you were able to enjoy that as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Tonight, according to the daily lectionary, we turn to the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew tonight, reading from chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. That is the gospel of the Lord. So we see the three temptations of Christ, and we could spend some time discussing each one of them, or sermon in each one of them, and I'll spare you that tonight. And let's just talk about uh, an overarching theme here. Well, first of all, we see that he is led into the wilderness by the Spirit. With the, spe with the specific purpose that he is going to be tempted, as are you and I. Jesus is the stand-in for all of us. He is all of us reduced into one. Israel reduced to one. God's people reduced, but really all of us reduced into one. And he is undoing the fall. And there's a lot we could say about his incarnation, taking on the flesh and the womb of Mary. Uh, we'll save that for when that comes up again. But you, you can think about God's people. So they were in bondage, as are we. We're in bondage to sin. We are slaves to sin. And Jesus makes that very clear. You know, he'll be discussing, and this is recorded for us in the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 8. You know, he's in this very heated dialogue with uh, the Pharisees, etc. And we read this on Reformation Day, so just about a month from now we're going to read this. Uh, if anybody sins... They are a slave to sin. You know, and the question for that, you know, it's, he says, you know, if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. Says, well, we've never been a slave to anybody. Uh, uh, um, the truth will set you free, is what he says. And then he goes on to talk about the sun. But they, you know, they, they say we've never been a slave. They forget their own history. But he, 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 he clarifies in that dialogue there. He says, you know, anybody who commits a sin is a slave to sin. Well, that's you and me. That's all of us. And um, we're born in that bondage. 
and yet we're freed by the blood of Christ. And you can think about the Passover, think about the Israelites, and Jesus being you know, the standard for the whole nation of Israel, for everybody again. And the, the last great plague that God inflicted upon the Egyptians when they were holding the Israelites captive was the Passover. And you may recall, if you watch the wonderful movie with, with Charlton Heston, oh my gosh, um, it is the blood of a, a male lamb, unblemished, uh, very strict restrictions, and that blood is taken and put on the doorpost and lintels, so the cross beam uh, and the side posts of the door. And we're told that the destroyer, death, when it sees the blood, will pass over whoever's on the other side of the blood. Uh, and so they were freed, and you know, the, you know, what God had predicted, what he had promised, you know, Pharaoh finally speaks, you know, take your treasures, take your spoils, and go. And, and, you know, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, so he will pursue them and he will be destroyed. Uh, his army will be destroyed. And that we have that reading on Easter about, you know, the, the, the Egyptian forces being drowned in the Red Sea as the people passed through it. And the wall caved in, the walls of water caved in on them. Well, anyway, these people are led into the wilderness by mighty miracles. And they grumble. And they, you know, they, they, they romanticize, as we all do, the days of slavery. You know, it was better when I didn't know Christ. I could do whatever I wanted. You know, you forget how miserable you were and how your body was racked with turmoil and sin and the effects of that sin. Um, and how uh, there was no hope for you. You know, and you were searching anywhere and, and everything seemed to be like a dead end. Whether it was in the bottom of a bottle. Or all these spiritual things that people find. And they, and they... They might be in them for a year or two or even more, but then, you know, they, they hit a wall because there's nothing there. Hopefully before they die, they hit that wall. So these people are let out of the wilderness just like us. I mean, think about the wilderness that you have been led into, whatever that may be, you know, where God seemed far off and you seemed alone, uh, you know, whether it was because of your own sin and the sin of others around you and you grumbled against God. Knowing full well, dear child of God, dear person who has been by the waters of holy baptism, grafted into the nation of Israel, you are an heir to everlasting life. You who know the whole story, in your weakness, grumble. Don't we? So you see in these temptations, Jesus undoing what we can. You know, standing up these temptations of the devil, answering with the word of God, you know, um, and, and, uh, and clinging to that word of God. Not misquoting the word of God, which the devil tries to do, but doing it. But he's standing in for us and getting it right in the wilderness. Now he's going to shed his blood, the sinless one. We're going to hear those ones. We're being recreated. You know, we're, re we're recreated in him. He's undoing the fall. So in him, you know, through as we're reborn through the waters of holy baptism, you know, we in Christ are a new creation because we are covered with his righteousness. Remember that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and Paul explains how in Christ we are a new creation. Uh, new creation, because he goes on to say, God made him, he made him, the reference there is God the Father, who knew no sin to be sin. Interesting language. Not just to be a sinner and do a couple bad things here and there. He becomes sin because he's going to put sin to death. Your sin. Our grumblings and stuff like that. And, and, you know, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We get his righteousness. We get, when we fail, and we try not to, We when we succumb to the temptations of the evil one or our own you know, wickedness or sin that lurks in our own hearts. It's not always Satan. You know, you're still a sinner too. And in our weakness, when we succumb, you know, do that, you know, throw our hands there. It's like, again? No. Um, there's Christ. And there's his blood and his righteousness. And and when Satan comes in attacking us, and we're going to actually talk about this in some length on Sunday, because Sunday we celebrate St. Michael's and Elena's, which is really still a celebration of Christ. Uh, of course, you know, um, and, you know, be gone, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Uh, you shall worship the Lord God, and him only shall you serve. And, uh, you know, you have his word. You have the promises that he has spoken unto you, that he has made to you. The remarkable thing, God makes you a promise, manifest in Christ our Lord, fulfilled in Christ our Lord, upheld in Christ our Lord. But what you are, forgiven, heirs of everlasting life. So we have it written for us. So when Satan comes and whispers in our ears and reminds us of our evilness and our wickedness and tries to tempt us, tempt us, get behind me, Satan. You have no authority here. Now, Sunday will speak a lot more about that. I'm um, that great 
big feast day, St. Michael's and All Angels. So uh, hopefully you can be there for that or uh, or listen in. Um, if you can't or if you're not a member of our church, hopefully your church will be celebrating that great, that, that great feast day. All right, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for the church and the pastors you have called to serve, my brothers in office, and for those who work alongside of us, teachers, deaconesses, all the church workers, and for the missionaries who serve your church throughout the world and often very dangerous places, that their safety would be uh, um, secured by you and uh, that their earthly needs may be met as they proclaim the gospel and administer the words and sacraments in those places. Pray that you bless all those that are there to support them too. We ask you that you would grant us a fruitful and salutary use of the blessed sacrament of Christ's body and blood as we continue to go about our various vocations. We ask you to be with those who are in the path of, of uh, Hurricane Helen, Helene, and I'm going to read this prayer that the Synod has published. Remember, Heavenly Father, all those in peril from the path of Hurricane Helene. Have mercy and grant them your saving peace. Bless the last-minute preparations of the government and relief agencies, that many lives may be spared. Make your people's confidence in your unfailing love to be a shining light among those who do not know you, that they may also take refuge in your comfort in this time of distress. We ask all of this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those um, who are in that storm's path and uphold them and keep them safe. We ask you, uh, especially be with those who will be working to restore power and, and uh, uh, order and the various relief efforts of our church body that you'd bless um, our relief agency uh, as they prepare to meet the needs of people in those places. We ask you to be with those who are crying out for healing and according to your good and gracious will, place your healing hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful of your love. We ask you to be with Kathy, Roger, Myron, Dennis, Dawn, Dave, Elena, Joanne, Betty, Pam, Donna, Dorothy, Pat, Grace, Angie, Robert, Ellie, Stephanie, Eric, Susan, M, Aaron, Grant, Joan, Jeremy, Betty, Jenny, Bob, Dave, Anita, Paul, Allison, Allie, Fern, Amy, Scott, Luke, Aaron, Jim, Tom, Eric, Beth, Dylan, Jeff, Christy, Brad, Clint, Marlis, Karen, Sue, Tim, Bert, Heather, John, Joe, Liberty, Dawn, Lori, Chris, Phil, Katie, Michelle, Bethany, Amber, Tyler, Joy, Tammy, Robo, Anita, Tom, Carly, and all who are crying out to you. And again, we ask you to place your hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful of your love and your gift of everlasting life. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Put into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, and to all things. Let your holy angel be with me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing 718. Jesus, lead thou on.
Jesus, lead the one till our rest is won. And although the way be cheerless, we will follow calm and fearless. Guide us by thy hand to our fatherland. If the way be drear, if the foe be near, let not faithless fears overtake us, let not faith and hope forsake us. For through many a woe to our home we go. When we seek relief from a long felt grief, when temptation comes alluring, make us patient and enduring. Show us that bright shore where we weep no more. Jesus, lead thou on till our rest is won. Heavenly leader, still direct us, still support, console, protect us, till we safely stand in our fatherland. That's Jesus Lead Thou On by Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf. Uh, um, interesting name and uh, a lot we could say about him. Anyway, uh, uh, as I prayed for um, the people in the path of the hurricane, of course, our, our church body has a wonderful uh, uh, relief agency, disaster response agency, led by a wonderful man, Pastor Johnson. I will pass along information as I receive it about relief efforts down there uh my guess is well certainly they will need you know always need money uh and but i'll share that information too if there is a need for groups to travel down there what the synod likes us to do is to have just to have people to start driving down there but coordinate that through them so we can be where we need to be uh to be not a hindrance to the local officials and you know some places you just can't get through easily if it's you know really badly but a lot of you know like there's going to be you know, there possibly could be dislocated members and churches that are destroyed there. Uh, so we'll, I'll keep you appraised of that as best I can on the Facebook page and through these nine o'clock devotionals, of course, on Sunday morning. Uh, you can also check the Synod's website and see what information they have there. There's a tab on the website for uh, disaster relief, and I'm sure that'll be put front and center uh, as the need and the assessment comes available. Right now, the best and always the most important thing you can do is pray. So have a blessed evening, my brothers and sisters, and uh, by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.